Hey, what's up guys? My name is Eterno and welcome back to my OpenGL series. So last time we set up an OpenGL windowing and context library called GLFW, which basically just gave us the ability to create a cross-platform window and initialize a graphics context for OpenGL where we could do all of our drawing. If you haven't seen that video yet, make sure you check it out because it's going to be important for this video here. And we even got a triangle onto the screen and everything looked like it was working properly and well, it was. However, what you might have noticed in the previous video is that we actually linked something called OpenGL32.lib and the header files that we actually ended up using for spe like specifically for OpenGL functions were basically the ones that either GLFW provided, which in turn are just the Windows ones. Now, Windows has a graphics API already. It's called DirectX or Direct3D to be a little bit more specific. That's what Windows uses. That's what you should kind of be using. According to Microsoft, that's what you should be using to do graphics on Windows, and it makes sense. And me personally, for a for a real kind of game, for a real project, for a game engine, I would be using Direct3D to render on Windows because that's what's native to the platform. That's what you kind of should be using. OpenGL, though, remember, is not kind of up to Windows to decide if that's a thing or not. It's up to our GPU manufacturers, it's up to the GPU drivers, and, and, and the GPU drivers from Nvidia and AMD and Intel, they all support OpenGL as a rendering API. So what we need to do now is not really rely on Windows and their kind of OpenGL header files, which only go up to OpenGL 1.1, which is kind of the last version of OpenGL, which is also kind of the first version 1.0 was kind of a bit weird. We don't talk about that. 1.1, OpenGL 1.1 was kind of the last, uh, the, the first real version of OpenGL. And that, that's as far as Windows goes with it. So since we're on Windows, we need a way to actually get all of the modern OpenGL functions. Not even, I'm not even talking about modern ones. I'm just talking about anything newer than like 1997, right? OpenGL 1.1, anything, anything newer than that. If we want to actually call those functions in our C++ code, we need to get them from somewhere. And as I mentioned in the welcome to OpenGL video, which was the first one again linked up there, OpenGL functions, it's, it's not something you download really. It's stuff that is actually in your graphics drivers. The OpenGL functions are implemented in your GPU drivers. So what we need to do now is in order to use any kind of functionality that is newer than OpenGL 1.1, we need to actually get into those drivers pull out the functions and call them. Now, when I say pull out the functions, I don't literally mean pull out the functions. What we actually need to do is basically just get the function declarations and then link against the functions as well. So we need to access the driver DLL files and just retrieve function pointers to the functions inside those, those libraries. That's what we need to do. Now, OpenGL past 1.1, so basically modern OpenGL and all of that, there are a lot of functions. There are a lot of functions. So whilst we could theoretically do this manually, there are a few problems with that. First of all, it would not be cross-platform. So to basically access the drivers and pull out functions from that, we need to we need to use some Win32 API calls if we're on Windows, right? Load library and load function pointers to all that. That's not great because it's gonna be Windows only. And then the second problem is if there are like I don't know, over a thousand functions or something like that, then we need to go through all of them manually and write code for that. That's gonna just be a terrible plan. It's just not gonna be fun at all. So what we're gonna do now is we're actually gonna use another library. Now there are a few libraries that actually do this for you, but I just want you guys to understand that what this library actually does is actually really straightforward. And you can look at the source code for this library for yourself and see what it does if you want, if you like. But basically all it does is it provides the OpenGL API specification kind of uh, function declarations and symbol declarations and constants and all that stuff for you in a header file. And then the kind of the behind the scenes file or the, or the, the CPP file, or in this case, I think it's a .c file, the actual implementation of the library goes into your, it, it identifies what graphics drivers you're using, finds the appropriate DLL file, and then loads all of the function pointers. That's what it does. That's all it does. It's very, very boring. It's not magical at all. Don't think that these libraries implement the functions or anything. They don't. They just access the functions that are already on your computer in binary form. And the library that we're going to use that does that for us is something called Glue or G-L-E-W, or the OpenGL Extension Wrangler. There's also another library called Glad. You can use that if you like. It's a bit more specific with extensions to OpenGL and all of that stuff, and you can configure it a little bit better. I don't really care about that. Uh, we're just trying to write OpenGL code and Glue does everything I need. It's a little bit simpler. 
So we're going to use glue. So the first thing we're going to do is go to glue.sourceforge.net. Again, link will be in the description. This is the glue website. Again, we have the opportunity to download the source code if we want to. And that is what I would absolutely be doing if this was a serious project or a game engine. However, because this is just about learning OpenGL and this is something that enables us to write OpenGL code, I don't care about that. I'm just going to get the binaries for Windows. So I'm going to click on this link here. And then once it's downloaded, I'm going to open the zip archive and there'll be a folder there called glue 2.1 in this case. I'm just going to copy that. I'm going to go back into our actual directory of our OpenGL solution. And just like last time where we put GLFW inside the dependencies folder, I'm going to paste glue into this dependency folder as well. Okay, so here we go. And inside that glue folder, we have everything we need. Now, one thing I'm actually gonna do is rename this to just glue, okay? Not not really necessary and does kind of strip the version. It's obviously, before it was obvious to tell that this was glue 2.1.0. Now you don't really know what version of glue is. I'm just doing this for simplification kind of purposes, just so that it's a bit easier for us. But now we have glue and GLFW as well. So inside this, we have a few different folders. The ones that we kind of care about for linking as well as include and live, this is exactly the same as linking GLFW. So that was in episode two, check that out if you haven't already. I also just made a video about how linking libraries in C++ actually work, works and how you can use libraries in C++. That's linked up there, check that out for sure. That'll help you understand what's going on here because I'm gonna try and keep this brief this time. So doc also includes all the kind of documentation that you want. You can see it's just an HTML format. So you can just open up index.html. That's the main webpage. Let's open it in Chrome. And we have something that looks exactly the same as the webpage, but you can see that this one is local. So this is where reading documentation is kind of important. If we go to usage, first of all, it tells us how to actually initialize this. Now I'm going to point out a few issues that you might encounter with glue if you don't read the documentation. There's two that I can think of right now that might not be apparent. The first one is actually literally the first thing that this documentation says, and that is, first, you need to create a valid OpenGL rendering context and call glue init to initialize the extension entry points. So you can't use OpenGL functions from glue until you call glue init, that's the first one. And second of all, as it says, you need to create a valid OpenGL rendering context before you call glue init. So over here in our source code, we have glfw init. If we were to call glue init here, would it work? I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna answer that right now, we'll see. Anyway, back to the documentation. It tells us exactly how to kind of initialize this. Glue init is what we call, and then we can check to see if that return code from glue init, if that return integer or gl enum, which is just an integer, is glue okay or not. And if it's not glue okay, that means we have a problem. So pretty easy to tell here. There's a bunch of stuff about extensions here as well and all that stuff. Now, in the building section of this, we have a bunch of things that are important for building this, but again, we don't really care about that. And also in the installation section, you can see that there are some things listed about how to build the library as well, if you're trying to use it as a shared library and all that stuff. But anyway, we'll, we'll kind of explore it and find out for ourselves as well. But just, but just another reminder, if you're using a new library, read the documentation. It doesn't hurt to do that. It might take a little bit of time, but overall you might see things that first of all are going to prevent you from accidentally doing things incorrectly and then pulling your hair out because it's not working. Whereas it appears that it, it might, it should be. And also you might be able to say that, oh, I can actually use this in a way that I didn't, I didn't even think of. The really important thing though, is that this is C++. We're running code in C++ and C++ allows you to do things in many, many, many ways, many different ways. And especially if you're new to C++, you might think, oh, okay, every library I use follows this progression, follows this kind of style. You can't assume that. There's so many ways to do stuff in C++ and everyone thinks that they're doing it the right way. So what you need to do is read the documentation and don't don't make assumptions because they might be doing something crazy. They might be defining their own meta language for certain things or whatever. You can't kind of assume that stuff. So documentation, important to read. Anyway, I've done this before, so I'm not gonna read all of this right now, but let's set this up with our project. So I've extracted all of this here. Again, we've looked at the documentation. Bin contains inside release. We have x64.32, which has our DLL file. I don't really care about that because we're going to link this statically. Remember, you pretty much always want to link statically if you can. So over here inside include, we have our actual includes. You're probably realizing right now that this is exactly the path that we need to add to our actual project, to our compiler include paths, and you are correct. So I'm going to copy the end of that project after dependencies go to our project, right click on OpenGL, hit properties. And then I'm going to go over here into configuration. You can see it's set to debug. I'm just gonna make sure that that's on all configurations. Platform Win32 is fine. Inside C++ general, 
I'm going to add a semicolon to the end of this and paste in this path that I just copied and then just stick solution directory to the front of that. Now, if there's a lot of stuff here and you don't really wanna add semicolons or scroll through this, you can just drop down this box here and hit edit. You can see that we have a list of them here and they're much easier to see. Okay, fantastic. Let's talk about linking the library now. So if we go back to our folder here, just gonna go back a bit into uh, dependencies, glue, and then lib. Now, inside release and Win32, which is the one we care about, we've got two. Which one of these do you think is a static library and which one do you think is the dynamic library? Well, plot twist, they're both technically static libraries, but this one is used if you want to link with the DLL. This one is used if you want to link with just the static library because this is the entire static library. So the two things that give it away is the fact that this has an S here and also that the size is significantly larger than the other one. Remember, if you have an S there, it probably stands for static. Again, things that you kind of just learn with experience. So this is the one that we want to link against. I'm gonna copy this directory path, go into link in general and then additional library directories. I'm just gonna drop this down here to make it easier for you guys to see. Hit this new kind of thing button and then just paste in a uh, solution directory over here and my path. So there we go, looks pretty good to me. And then the one we're linking with, remember, is glue, doesn't really matter about the order here in this case either. Glue32s.lib is what I want. Okay, fantastic, done. Now I should be able to call glue in it. And also let's just go ahead and include my path. gl slash glue.h. Now, if you actually look into here, the reason I know it's GL and not glue or whatever, GLW has GLW, but glue doesn't, because of course, if I look in the actual include directory, there's a folder called GL and then glue.h. So remember the path that we're specifying here is the path from this compiler include directory that we've just included. Okay, great. So back over here, you can see that this works successfully. Let's try building this. So I'll right click here and hit build. Okay, so straight away, we actually get an error and it says GL.h included before glue.h. This is coming from, if we look at the output, this is coming from our actual glue.h header file. So we can double click here if we want, and we can take and we can take a look at this. So the reason this is happening is because there's literally a hash error defined, which is a compile time error that happens if these symbols are defined. So basically all this is asking you to do is please include this before you include any other OpenGL things. So glw happens to include gl.h. So what we're going to do is just move this glue so that it's before this and that's it. Let's try building this again. Okay, awesome. We compiled successfully. However, we get a link error. And that link error is because unresolved external symbol, glue in it. Now we did link everything, didn't we? So what's the issue? Well, let's take a look at how glue is actually set up. If we actually go to the glue header file and we look for this glue in it function, you can see that we have this glue API kind of macro defined before the actual return type. Let's take a look at what that means. And if I jump over here, we see this, as well as a comment which kind of explains it for us. So glue static is defined for static library and glue build is defined for building the DLL library. Right now, we don't have glue static defined. So what's happening is it's coming over here, glue build isn't defined. So it's coming over here and it's actually defining glue API as extern decal spec DLL import, which is an MSVC compiler intrinsic, which basically tells the linker, this is coming from a DLL file. You need to DLL import this. Now we're not using the DLL version of glue, are we? We're using the static library. So if we write code like this, it's not gonna, it's not gonna be able to link it. It's, it's, just, it's just not gonna work. We need to actually just use it like any other function. And of course, if you look up here, you can see that if glue static is defined, we don't get that kind of decal spec DLL import or export. Export, of course, is if you're actually building it. Import is for when we want to import it from a DLL. So we want to use this. And the way we do that is we define glue static. Again, something that you could definitely get if you read the documentation, but if you don't, you might have to kind of reverse engineer it and actually look at how it works to figure out how to get the stuff to compile and link. I just wanted to show you that for fun, basically. So if we go back to here, we need to define glue static. And I'm going to do that by right clicking on my project, going to properties, going to CC++ preprocessor, and then over here in preprocessor definitions, I'm going to type in glue underscore static and hit enter again, making sure that I'm on, I'm on all configurations and Win32. I'll hit okay, and now I'm going to build my application. Okay, awesome, so we don't get any errors here in our output and our application's fine. So, we know that glue init returns a value. If we actually look at this, you can see there's no documentation in the header file, so we need to go back here. If we go back to our usage in the documentation, you can see that this return value from glue init, if it actually isn't glue okay, then we have a problem. So let's go ahead and check that. I wanna say if glue init doesn't equal glue okay, then maybe we can just print something like this, just for now. And I'll put a breakpoint on this line. Before we start, I'll also have to include IO stream, of course, 
to use C out. So let's hit F5. Okay, so we're on this line of code. Let's hit F10. Oh no, look at that. It's not equal to clue okay and we get an error printing. What happened? Well, remember when I mentioned whether it was okay to call glue init after glfw init, and then I asked you guys if it was, and then maybe you said something, or maybe you just ignored me and waited for the result. Well, it, it's not okay. We can't call glue init here. The reason we can't is because the documentation clearly states that you need to create a valid OpenGL rendering context. Where do we do this? GLFW make context current. That is when we create that OpenGL context, okay? So what we need to do is move this code so that it's after we have a valid context and a valid window and all of that. So now if I move this down here, put a breakpoint here, hit F5. Now if I hit F10, look at that. It skips over this because it is okay and everything is good. And that's all there is to it. Now we have access to all of the OpenGL functions that we actually have up to the current OpenGL version. And if I want to use any of the kind of OpenGL functions that are in newer versions of OpenGL, such as GL gen buffers or something like that, you can see that I can just type it in there and it's fine. If you look at the actual glue header file, so if I right click here and go to open document. This is actually a really large file. If you scroll down to the bottom, you can see it's 23,000 lines of code. It might even slow your computer down a bit, but this has everything that it is. And the way that it works, if we loosely look at it, is that for a lot of functions, what it does is it actually defines function pointers, which are all, which is what all of these are. So if you were to use a function such as GL gen buffers, like I just did, it actually, and let's just make this, let's just loosely make this kind of work. So we want one buffer at A, and it actually has to be an unsigned end. But anyway, there's our function. If we actually go to that function definition, you can see it's just a macro, it's a hash define. So what we actually want to do if we, not, if we want to look at the function signature is go to this glue gen buffers, and then go to the type of this function pointer. And then we get the return type, which is void, as well as the parameters it takes in. So a size and an, and, a, and an unsigned end. But of course, we'll be looking at this and discovering a lot more of this as our OpenGL journey goes on. So that's it. That's how you initialize glue. That's how you get to the modern OpenGL version. One more thing we'll do for today is actually print our OpenGL version to just make sure we're up to date. This has nothing to do with actual glue, by the way, but it's just useful information that we should have. So what I'm going to do is once we have a valid OpenGL context, I'm basically just going to write stdc out and then gl get string gl underscore version just like that i'm going to remove this breakpoint hit f5 and you can see that what it says over here is open gl 4.4 build blah, blah 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 i'm actually running on a laptop right now which has an intel gpu as well as the nvidia one it's obvious from this from this line here that it's actually using the intel gpu for running this application if i switched to nvidia it would have said the nvidia driver version and probably the word nvidia as well as a higher open gel version but it's always useful to know what you're actually running so printing that to the console is useful stuff Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, you can hit that like button. You can also help support this series and get rewards such as videos early, contribute to video planning, your name in the credits, all that kind of fun stuff by going to patreon.com forward slash the channel. It really does help support the series and make sure that I can make these videos more frequently for you guys. I will see you next time. Goodbye.